So first, let's just talk about what just the general feature of the vault and how it works. So there, there are two states that it can be locked in, that an ID can be locked in. And right now, when the ID is locked, the one thing that it cannot do is it cannot spend funds. But it actually, what it really cannot do is it cannot um, spend for any transaction besides a stake transaction, which ensures that the funds go exactly to where they came from. And so it basically can't move funds out of itself, but it can stake, okay? So the fact that it can stake is interesting. And when we were thinking about how we're going to do certain locked things um, and give away the key and let people try to, you know, take the money and everything. Um, if, for example, we made a locked ID with, you know, 5,000 uh, coins on it or something, and we gave away the primary key, everybody in the network could stake that uh, that ID, the funds in that ID. And, and it would basically mean that whenever one of those UTXOs from that ID would win, there'd be a little fight in the network that, you know, it would be better not to have that, where everybody would be trying to get the block and, yeah, somebody's going to win, but, you know, I'd kind of like not to to just broadly publicize large TXs of, of funds that are stakeable. Um, and so we do have an idea of a way to basically make those funds locked such that they're not stakeable, but they could be spent if you were able to unlock the ID and that might be a nicer way to go. So when you lock an ID, there are two ways to lock it. One is with the unlock delay, and you could think of that as like a time lock, you know, on a bank vault or something like that. Nobody can get around it without revoking and recovering the ID. So unless somebody has revocation and recovery authority, they won't be able to get around the time lock. According to the protocol, they need to wait when they uh, unlock that ID before they can spend outputs of that ID now or to that ID now um, if they if they uh, unlock it and you see that it's not you so so basically the kind of if you're going to set an unlock delay you would typically set the delay to be however long it would take you to recognize that someone who isn't you had unlocked your ID by seeing it was done on the blockchain. And so that's kind of where, you know, these authorities come in because you have two authorities. You have recovery, but you also have revocation. And revocation is first. Now, the way it works is if your ID is revoked then you can recover and redefine it with the recovery id authorities but if your id is not revoked then the recovery authority has no control over it and if you're um and neither the re revocation or the recovery id can do really anything unless they're you know in a state to do it so Revocation can't take any money, it can only revoke. And once it revokes, it can't recover unless it is the recovery authority. So what you, so basically, I'm, I'm probably going into too much detail, but the point is that um, you can give someone conceivably your revoke authority like a company that could lower the amount of time you might want to set your unlock delay because they may be really good at notifying you or it could be an app that does it there are many different ways you can get that time down. So the unlock delay is however long it's going to take you to revoke your funds and then being able to recover them 
when someone who isn't you tries to access them. That's it. Um, so that's an unlock delay. You would set some number of blocks, some number of relative blocks. Now that number of blocks is not going to be able to be less than 20 because 20 is the expiry, default expiry time of a transaction when it's posted. So it's not going to be able to be less than the number of blocks of the default expiry. So by the time it gets mined in, um, there's still gonna be some amount of time left for it to unlock. Uh, I'm going to answer these other questions after. Um, so if you set a time lock delay, and that's really all about being able to stake, being willing to wait a little bit to access your funds, you probably want to take your revocation and recovery and stick them somewhere, you know, whether they're the same ID or not. In order to make a time lock really matter, you really do need to have a separate revocation and recovery. Because otherwise you could just, you know, the primary ID can change the revocation and recovery and then it could revoke and recover and change the time lock. So you really do, if you're gonna do a time lock, need uh, at least one other ID to be a revocation recovery. Um, so, or two, you know, a revocation and then a recovery. And that's one kind of time lock. The other kind of time lock is unlock at block. That's an absolute time lock that's going to be counting down from the time it's set. And it's going to unlock at a specific block. So now that we got that, I'm going to put into the uh, marketing Uh, window the command now first if you use Varus desktop each man below commands are accessible in Settings, that's the little gear. Coin, settings, and line. Right. I'm going to assume that if you're using Linux, you know how to do dot slash, and I'm just going to say Varus. All right. So the command for setting a time lock on an ID for say Mike would be set identity time lock Mike and I'm gonna say let's make it a um Set unlock delay. It's going to be an unlock delay. And I'm going to say, I want a day. I want a day of time. From the time I unlock, I'll wait for my funds for a day. This is going to be some, you know, a lot of funds for me. And that's how I'm going to enter it. Okay. So if I do that from a wallet that controls the primary address of that ID, that is going to make it so that when I try to unlock it, and I'm gonna, so let, let me edit that to make sure that it says what it's doing. And when I try to unlock it, I'm going to do this.
And what that will do is it'll just make it so that it will be, I could also like, I could make it instead of zero, I can say a block that's earlier than the current block. Okay. Now you can never circumvent a lock by unlocking it earlier than it's already set to. But it will accept this command and what it will do is it will now unlock as soon as it can, which is going to be whatever the current block is, plus 1440, plus the expiry, default expiry, which is 20. So basically that is how to set an unlock delay and set a time lock. Now, I know that uh, Max has been writing a tutorial on this and it looks pretty good. And I think he's posted it in a few places. Um, and, and so I think that actually says sim basically similar stuff. And I think it's quite good um, to set an absolute time unlock. You could do this. What's the current height? So if you wanted to unlock it at say one point block one point eight million. I do that and then that id could stake it could redirect its funds even from staking only but it can't move the funds that it controls it can receive funds um and those are really the commands that you could execute from a wallet that controls the id now if you're dealing with a multi-sig wallet or a multi-sig ID, um, you can do this. And what that would do is it will return back a partially signed transaction. You're gonna to need to have at least some signing capability. It's gonna return back a partially signed transaction, which you would give to the other people controlling the uh, identity with you, and then it would lock it. So yeah, this helps a lot. Is, go, go ahead. This helps a lot. Um, I'm curious if, um, uh, if this, it's, it's able to be seen on the chain and if so, uh, like for example, if an ID is locked, can we see, uh, if it has a unlock at block, uh, can we see which block it is unlocked at and that sort of information? Yes. Um, IDs that are locked or unlocked, uh, this is controlled through uh, flags that are in the ID and a value. And so there is a flags. Let me see. So there's a flags value. Um, I've still got an old version ID and I haven't updated it in some time. And let's see. I'm gonna just get rid of a few things in here that I don't need to put in, although it's all public. Um, So this flags variable, you see it's zero there. Um, that would end up being 
two, it basically has one of its bits set. If it is a, a um, relative, like a delayed unlock, but it's locked. And if it is a delayed unlock and it's locked, then the time lock value says how many blocks after it's unlocked, it will have to wait. And if you um, instead, uh, it's set, the bit is set, which in the case of the current version, that would end up being two. But when we start doing currencies and things, it, it's just gonna be the right bit being set, which either person who understands flags or software can see, but it's basically the second the bit that is equivalent to the value two being set. Um, and when that's the case, when it's cleared as it is now, then time lock would be equivalent to the value at which this would unlock. Mm. That's cool. I really appreciate that. That definitely helps. Um, and would that would that time lock change each block if it is some uh, let's say it's unlock at block? Um, then as no. it as it get no okay. All right. It, it just is that block. I see. Okay. Excellent. Um, I'll definitely look more into this now it, it's helpful to get that information i hope it's not too um like low level or anything like that for i hope everyone, not but, for other people yeah. i i hope i mean this is what right now the capability of doing this is just i mean there isn't another protocol that does it this is exposed in the protocol we want to get it into the gui as soon as we can but you can use this it works you know and um, you, you mentioned you mentioned that you could receive funds uh, would those received funds be spendable or no, they get as part of the locked No, funds, any but... funds, any funds put into a locked ID are under the rules of the ID. Okay. But anything that gets any rewards from staking can be, uh, can be put into another ID or address that won't be locked. They're spendable. Is that, you said that, right? Right. Now, now. There are two things. When people are setting up time locks, the things that I would caution is just make sure that you've got the, your revocation and recovery, you know, available. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention, since we seems like we're moving off of this, um, block time is not exactly 60 seconds. And as we've been measuring it, It's closer to 61 seconds right now. Um, but what we've found when we're predicting the forward time is that if we measure like the last, I don't know, um, Englal has been doing this. If he measures like the last some period of time, we end up getting very, very accurate time. So the, the, combination of everything going on in the network is hitting around that time and rather than saying okay it's going to be exactly this if we're going to set longer unlocks for the future and it matters like you're going to set a year or something like that and this is block and you really should go off of the um, measured time that's one thing I'd say and I think uh, you know we'll get We'll get an easier way to expose that measured time, but uh, Englal has been basically doing it for us. And like on this last um, upgrade, we set it two weeks ahead, and it wasn't the only divergence we really had. It was like five minutes divergence over the course of two weeks, which is actually quite a lot of blocks. And then right near the end, it just because it can diverge when it's closer, but over a long period of time. If you use measured time, it, it ends up being quite accurate. Um, I would just say that. And then, let's see. And then, Ihuliano, you were asking a question, which I saw that uh, about Lusiosaurus saying he's going to do that, so I thought I'd answer. You were asking a question, though, uh, and I think I missed what it was. Oh, 
I don't know. Maybe you did answer it. I don't think I asked something other than that. But if there was any commands in there that you wanted to, uh, or any aspects of that code that you wanted to highlight further, please do. Definitely, if it'll help us out to understand uh, better. Do you mean in the JSON of the identity there that I posted? Uh, sure. Yeah, because you were you were you were uh, going through a few of them. So if there's any others that that uh, you didn't touch on that you would, then please do. Otherwise, that's fine. I, I think you've answered my questions. I appreciate it. No. no yeah. This is just um, if if you just do a get identity on any. Yeah. Any yeah. Exactly. Because this is all the information of the whole identity, so it can have a lot of different information but for the vault specifically we're looking over at the time lock uh, for the vault you're looking at flags and time lock flags and time lock excellent okay yeah if the if the bit that corresponds to the number two is set in flags then it's got then time lock represents a delay unlock if the hmm. bit that corresponds to the number two is clear not set in flags then time lock is an absolute Block after okay. which funds are available to spend. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Huh? I think the question that uh, Juliano was uh, asking uh, that maybe didn't get answered was about the uh, ability to um, have the staking rewards be paid to a separate ID. Uh, Juliano, did you? Oh, yeah. That? Maybe that's it. Yeah, that might be what you're thinking of. I did mention something like that. Yeah, so if you're if you set uh default ID equals um on your daemon and you set an ID for staking to go to, basically, then uh it'll go there instead of your locked IDs if you're staking on locked IDs. Excellent. Okay. That's pretty cool. I mean Wow. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's the vault feature. And, you know, as soon as we get other currencies in the DeFi live, it'll support, you know, holding any kind of currencies that can be on the network in that same safe way. So then as far as, uh, I think people have noticed that you can look at offers and take offers. Does anybody have an ID they want to sell that I might want to buy? Got the Bitcoin one. Might take some offers on it. You got Bitcoin? Yeah, the Bitcoin symbol ain't gave it to me. Are you interested in scam ads, maybe? <laughs> 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 I think that one we just want to like lose the keys for. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. So what do we have here? Let me see. So. I'll make an offer for, I heard Bitcoin paper wallet. I'm at, but I didn't really want to hear that. <laughs> uh, let's see. So does anybody want to sell something for any uh like that i might want to actually buy i'll just make an i'll make an offer for something but you're probably not going to want to sell it um bitcoin and i'm actually in the middle of debugging the thing that uh let's see I'm in the middle of debugging the thing that I was looking for, which will close my offer sooner than I want to. So I'm going to put a really long expiration height on it.
And this is what I'm going to run. And, you know, I don't expect that someone's going to take my offer. Let me just put it in there. Now, remember, you can do the same thing in the GUI under the coin settings. All right. So I'm going to make this offer from the mic uh, ID. I actually, I'll remove the currency in there. You don't need it. Um, and I'll make a bigger offer. That's not, a, that's not a very good offer. I'll offer a hundred Varus, which I guess might not be taken. Or the Bitcoin ID. Uh, I'm going to change one more thing here. I, I would not put version in there. It isn't something you need. Probably best not to put that in there. Uh, and I will... make that offer and so when i make that offer on the next block everyone will be able to see that offer by doing this okay so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to actually make that offer i mean if you want to go ahead if you if you want to send uh sell it to me Uh, you can do this. Not, not really. No. And actually that is not really a great thing to be able like other databases should do that. You know, it's really not a great thing to be able to do that because, um, we don't want queries that are going to return everything on the network as much as we can. We try to avoid those things. If it's potentially some gigantic number. Um, you can do this. That'll show you all the offers for Varus, but it could get very big. It might be an impractical command at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go ahead and enter that. Um, man. Exactly as I have there. I'm going to remove this other one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And so next time the, there's a block mind, you should be able to see An offer for the Bitcoin ID with this command to see offers. I see it here. I typed that in and I see what what came up. So it went yep. through already. Yep. So now that offer is there and uh, it can be taken. Take but on. only by the by that person. Only by the owner, obviously. Burns. So and no, you don't have to alerted? sell it to me for a hundred. I, I mean, I'd be happy to take it. I don't know I'd, what I'd do with it. I'd probably just donate it. Um, but uh, I it's yours. My list. So, 
that I posted. That? Like I got a I got a couple on the list. Uh, that if you want, like I'll I'll give you currency or rare if you want to like do it for like publicity in a sense, for like marketing signs. All right, I don't we have can the talk actual about that. Bitcoin. But we can I we can talk symbol. about that. We can talk about that and should, but this is actually just my own. Like this isn't the foundation or anything. This is just me, and. Uh, like can I ask a question? Uh, yeah, any questions? Sorry, go ahead, Burns. Whatever you said, go for that first since you were saying I was so. just saying, if Mike likes any of my NF or, uh, IDs, I call them NFTs, he can make an offer for one. That's basically, I'm just open offer out there. Yeah, I'll be happy to, but um, what I would just suggest now is let's, uh, my suggestion is on the call, let's not everybody say all the IDs that they've got. I, I think it's a cool ID and I'd be, you know, I mean, we'd be happy to even talk about that one. Um, but right now, I think my goal for this particular call, and I definitely want to follow up. I'm not saying I don't, but since I'm probably going to need to go in about 15 minutes, I just wanted to make sure that people understand how to use these things. Um, now, one thing that's going to happen is in about half an hour to 40 minutes, um, this is going to close. This offer is going to close. And that's what I'm actually in the process of debugging. So. Uh, instead of going to the full block, uh, 2 million, you're saying it'll. There yeah, yeah exactly. Close. Exactly. Yeah. On this version, it's going to close early. Oh, and then Flusiosaurus, I... Flusiosaurus had asked, you know, do you, uh, and I, and I said, I was going to answer and then I never did. Do you get, um, notified when there's a a time lock or i mean uh, when somebody unlocks an id and no there's no software yet i mean any software anyone can write something that looks at the blockchain and notifies you anyone can do these apps and these apis and we're you know the protocol being able to actually do this on an open permissionless system it isn't easy and it isn't some it's not just like a you know, I was thinking about what's the difference between this network and, for example, you know, DeFi contracts that are apps that are in the control of this group of people. This is a real blockchain network with all these capabilities. Like everyone enables this, not any small group of people who can change the contract and change the way it works. And all IDs on the network have this support. And it's the same with DeFi and everything else. So, um, so anyways, I, you know, this is the protocol and there, you know, it's all done peer to peer. So the GUI needs, like there's work to catch up every time there are new capabilities in the protocol. But there are, can also be people like writing apps or helping or doing these things. And we're, Happy if people want to help to talk about, you know, doing that. So, um, we will, we do intend to get this functionality in the GUI, but as far as notifying, I don't think there's any current, you know, notification API in the GUI that would recognize this. And then we also, somebody mentioned, um, you know, about how important it is to get to light mode and these things. And, Absolutely. That's like one of the next things that I'm going to be working on as well is, you know, we talked about getting the DeFi and these other things together. And that's like, that includes making sure that we can support um, light mode wallets in this process because it's got to be usable. So there's kind of a, a number of different things that are the priority right now to get this stuff together. And, uh, you know, getting support for new functionality being exposed to users is important. But before anything could be exposed to users, if it's real, if it's like a real thing, if it's not just, a, you know, a lot of people can write apps and UIs and different things. But if it's a real thing in the protocol, then it's got to get into the protocol first. We got to release it. And then anyone wants to make any of these capabilities, you know, then use it. And it might be that uh, it's going to take the liquidity of, you know, um, actually having 
other currencies in the network in order to get that kick started for people, but they will do it. It's just going to be a matter of time. You know, we just need to get things done correctly at the low level and we need to get um, what we can get into the user experience from that. And if there are people who want to help, we're absolutely happy to have your help. And, um, you know, and that's kind of where things are. So the GUI will event. I mean, I don't think there's going to be a notification in the GUI. Um, oh, wait, I just realized. I want to set a breakpoint because I was debugging. And I will get that breakpoint at some point. So that I can, luckily that order is still out there available on the network. Um, so, yeah, so I mean, all of this is peer to peer. The marketplace is peer to peer. Um, can Mike remove the offer? Yes, I can. That's a great question. Thank you for asking. Uh, okay, Mar said, can Mike remove the offer before expiry height? Um, And what I would do is, so here's the offer on the network. I'm going to not do it because I'm trying to catch a bug right now of why is it closing prematurely. And so I don't, I don't want to um, close it right now. But what I'll do is I'll put in what the offer shows up as on the network. And what I would say if I wanted to close it is I would say this. I can close many offers at once. That would close that offer and any expired offers. Because, and this kind of ties into how we might do an, a locked ID that can't stake. Um, the funds that are in an offer are actually, uh, like held in that offer and they do not stake. So, uh, if you're, if you've got money in an offer, that money is not eligible for staking until you close the offer and that money goes back and waits for another 150 blocks. Okay, and so if, for example, we had a locked ID that we wanted to release to the public the private key of, before we did that, we'd probably make it, um, uh, make an outstanding offer because then it wouldn't be able to stake on those funds. So we wouldn't have the public fighting over a block every once in a while. It's just no no reason to do that, and um, and when they got the control of the ID unlocked, they'd still be able to take the money. So um, you know, and there's been talk about steal my Varus and everything else, uh, and having an ID that we publish the private key on. And I'd like if we're gonna do something like that with you know a few thousand Varus or something. We talked about the foundation maybe putting up some Varus for doing that. If we're going to do that, I'd like to talk about talk to someone who's going to do that so that we can get that money sequestered in an offer so that people could close the offer, take the money if they were able to, but, you know, they won't be. And at the same time, we'll just publish this, you know, thousands of Varus that somebody could take if they could ever try. And, you know, just because we don't want to be arrogant, um, I was thinking that it would be nice to say, look, if you can take it, you can take it. And if you really do figure out a way to take it, then uh, if you tell us how, and we're able to revoke and recover, then we'll give you that much plus double. And, uh, and you just need to give us a little bit of time to address it. But I don't think, we don't believe there's any issue, absolutely, whatsoever. But that might not be as, you know, as uh, that might be a less arrogant way. And if 
And if someone figured out any possible kind of a uh, way to attack the network, um, then it's a way of actually getting cooperative help necessarily versus, you know, a black hat just trying to take things. So, um, anyways, those are the, some thoughts around that. So basically in order to release the public key for an ID that was locked in a way where I'd be happy doing it, I'd like to put the money on that ID into an offer that nobody's going to take so that um, when the person does get control of it, they can take the money, but until they actually get control of it and are able to spend, they wouldn't be able to stake that money. So nobody on the network would ever, you know, be able to stake the same funds, which of course, what, what would happen if that actually happened is every once in a while, there'd be a block that people would fight over. That's not, you know, I mean, that's, not necessarily good for keeping everything converged and smooth so it's not going to hurt the network but it would happen and i don't like the idea of it happening and uh and then uh on top of that what would happen is state guard you know would kick in and people would catch that there were multiple um stakes on that and then it would just be like this up for grabs trying to spend it a hundred blocks later by all the cheat catchers and so, you know, every once in a while, we just get a little, little round of activity on the network. And I just don't like that whole concept because I'd rather use the network for productive things. So, um, so that's uh, hopefully helpful to people. Uh, and yes, you can close the offers before the expiry height. Um, and it's good to not set the expiry height far in the future. I would please ask, you know, because you, if you leave it in there and you forget, um, that money is not staking for you. And, uh, you know, anybody could take it anytime they want, but um, it's not really doing anyone any good. So any other questions? Because... Actually, I hit my break point and I might just hop off and go dig into it. Nah, go for it. That's been a lot of talking from you and you've explained a lot of things and I really appreciate the, the time you take to, to come on and, and share with us and just keep us informed. Great. All right. Well, thanks everyone. And uh, I do suspect that since we are closing offers early right now, um, that that we'll have another update, but I don't. I'm not aware of any other issues besides that. So everything looks really quite good, and, and things seem to be working great. So I'm not not seeing any issues, and um. So yeah, thanks, thanks everyone. And uh, as far as getting this uh, steal my Varus thing together and some other promotional, I think that's a great idea. Um, and I'd like to. You know, I was hoping that maybe the foundation would uh, put up a little bit to help make that happen as just, you know, putting it there, not giving it away unless, of course, something ever happened, which I don't think will. Um, but basically putting it up there and then offering another, you know, double bounty if anyone could ever figure out anything. So it's kind of like a real a way to offer a security bounty that um, that makes it in my mind, more likely to generate white hat or gray hat behavior than uh, than just black hat behavior, which I think most security bounties do. So um, uh, as far as uh, T-Bone just offered to donate, to, we would definitely like to have donations to the foundation, to other things, um, and, to, and to drives and things like that. For the steel, my Varus, my thinking is uh, for this particular one, uh, I don't think that we want to lose the money. Like, I don't think anyone necessarily needs... I mean, the one thing that it would be is if the foundation put up money, then it wouldn't be staking on that money. Um, but, you know, the foundation is here to help as well. And 
we would want, you know, the foundation, I think, would want that money back afterwards. But whoever puts up the money, if we do it right, is not going to be staking on that money. And so I just kind of feel like it's one of those things that maybe could be best to ask the foundation to do. And I haven't cleared it with everybody, but I'm sure that I, I don't believe anyone would. I think everyone would agree with doing that. Um, so I don't think for this particular cause we necessarily need to have donations because it's not going to be spent. Uh, you know, I mean, we could we could put it in some kind of a of a fund or something. I, I'm I'm not trying to not get donations to the foundation because we certainly could use them. Um. But, you know, using the foundation for referrals on registering IDs, uh, donating to the foundation, you know, any of these things is great. And in this particular case, I would be happy to see the foundation putting up funds to, to be in this ID and then, uh, you know, I mean, having people donating for causes and things where we actually intend to spend the funds. And the thing the foundation would lose from doing that would be whatever the staking rewards would be for that, you know, period of time. So that's kind of my thinking on it. And I probably should go though, because I want to get, get to the bug catching while it's fresh. So, so maybe we can figure this out in the next day or so, and then really do something big on promotional stuff, because I think this is, this stuff is huge. And I think, you know, because we're in the open building stuff in the open, you know, sometimes it comes out and then we need to figure out how to really leverage it. And then, and it's like, uh, that is really how, you know, decentralized systems are built. And, um, and I think we're, we're making great progress. And so I'll get back to this stuff and, uh, probably have some comments in the next day or so. I'm guessing there's going to be some release to say, not closing prematurely. And then I think that's it. So talk to everybody later and thanks very much. Bye. Hey, just to also shout outs, uh, respect to Tango 808 who, uh, who was on promoting Veris community today. And uh, I'm not sure if if or where, when the, there will be a recorded version, but there should be a recorded version coming out. So if you want to listen to that, I'll post it when it's ready, uh, whenever it, it gets put out. But uh, yeah, thanks Tango808 for doing that work for us. Um, uh, Stantos, we do have access to uh, the community YouTube channel. So uh, you, can you also uh, publish there, if you haven't uh, finished. Yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, put a front and a back on it. Uh, you can also leave out the front, but uh, then we can later add in a thumbnail. Yeah, Rosso usually, of uh, Rosso. Uh, Maisie usually make, uh, makes the thumbnails uh, for the videos so they're all in line and look nice to start with. No, no, just create a, uh, a thread. You can do that nowadays. Let me show you. Yeah, but it can be a lot. You can put it up uh, for a week and it can all, always be unlocked and it uh, only locks after being inactive for the amount of time you said, a day, a week, or an hour, or uh, whatever. Yep. Sounds like a plan. Now let's see if the people that are not in a meeting uh, will adhere to that. Much obliged.
I guess this meeting is happening in his background.